manager's job, Folklore and Fact, by Henry Winston. The manager's job is a difficult concept to describe. One might say that the classical view says that the manager's four primary roles are to organise, coordinate, plan and control. However, Henry Minsford, the internationally renowned Canadian academic and author on business and management, believed otherwise. He says that these four words tell us very little of what managers actually do. In his writing, The Manager's Job, he wanted to break the reader away from this old perspective and introduce a more supportable and useful description of managerial work. Folklore. The manager is a reflective, systematic planner. Fact. Managers work at an unrelenting pace. Minsford did a study of 56 US foremen and found out that they carry out 583 activities per 8 hour shift. That's an average of 1 for every 48 seconds. Folklore. The effective manager has no regular duties to perform. Fact. Managerial work involves performing a number of regular duties that links to the organisation or its environment. The manager is seen as the person who sees visitors so that other people can get work done. Folklore The senior manager needs aggregation information which a formal management information system best provides. This was the classical view of the manager. Fact Managers cherish soft information such as verbal media telephone calls and meetings. Two British studies showed that managers spent an average of 66% to 80% of their time in oral communication. Folklore. Management is, or at least is quickly becoming a science and a profession. Fact. The manager's programs to schedule time, process information, make decisions and so on remain locked deep inside their brains. Roles are based on interpersonal relationships. These roles are the figurehead role, the leader role, and the liaison role. The figurehead role comprises of the ceremonial duties that must be performed by a manager, such as taking important customers to lunch and dealing with acknowledgements and requests. These duties may be routine but are vital to the running of an organisation. The leader role involves both indirect and direct leadership. Direct duties may include the hiring and training of their employees, while indirect duties may include tasks such as motivating and encouraging employees and finding a balance between the needs of the employee and the overall goals of the organisation. It is in this role that the influence of the manager is most apparent. The liaison role consists of creating contacts um, outside the vertical chain of command. A manager must form links with a wide variety of people and groups, such as clients, managers of outside organisations, subordinates and government officials, as opposed to solely with their superiors. This role is vital to gain access to outside information required for decision making and to spread to employees. Moving toward effective management. Effective management requires a great amount of introspect and insight. This is because it greatly affects how managers understand and respond to pressures and dilemmas. The fact that so much of the manager's information is gained and shared verbally can result in many problems. The solution? To create effective information channels. These are a worthwhile investment. Time lost creating them is regained when vital decisions need to be made. They allow the manager to take into consideration the broader picture of the business. Managers and analysts must work together to overcome the planning dilemma. To control time, the manager must turn obligations into advantages and turn their own priorities into obligations. How then do we train a manager? Skill training is just as important as cognitive learning when educating a manager. Skills are learned as a result of a combination of practice and feedback. Examples of skills include developing relationships, negotiating, motivating, etc. In conclusion, the manager is vital to the success of society, so all of these areas should be looked at. So what can we draw from Minsford's approach? It's true that the manager's role is to coordinate, plan, organise and control. But Minsford believed that the manager's job was made of much, much more.